G'day and welcome to the show. A week or two back I was talking about the Raspberry Pi 2 and the Banana Pi and the original Raspberry Pi and I mentioned that I was using uh, the Raspberry Pi 2 as a media centre. So what I thought I'd do in this week's episode is actually go through how to put a Raspberry Pi 2 media centre together. Uh, very simple, uh, won't take very long at all and uh, you should have yourself, if you wish to follow this guide, you should have yourself a nice uh, fast Raspberry Pi 2 powered media center. All right, so what I've got here are the raw products, the bits and pieces that you'll actually need in order to be able to put together yourself a uh, Raspberry Pi 2 media center. So first things first, I've actually got the Raspberry Pi 2 here. I've just got that encased in a couple of old scrap pieces of timber and that's just to, to be able to uh, place it where I uh, eventually want it and just to give it a little bit of protection. Um, so yeah, you can get nice cases for the Raspberry Pi, but I've just used a couple of scrap bits of timber for this one. So Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, the media, obviously the Raspberry Pi 2 uses a micro SD. Um, go for a nice quick one. So this is a class 10 32 gig micro SD. Anything above eight, anything above eight gig, uh, I'd not recommend going smaller. Uh, you do need a little bit of space uh, and some caching ability as well. So I'd recommend a, an 8 gig card if you, if you have the ability to grab one or larger. So there's the uh, 8 gig card. What I have here is actually a Wi-Fi. This is an 802.11n Wi-Fi um, USB module. And that's just for my connectivity. If you don't have uh, one of those, can't get one of those, uh, or you actually have um, Ethernet available, obviously the Raspberry Pi takes Ethernet, so use that. Uh, that will actually give you a more reliable and solid connection with less power drain than a Wi-Fi adapter. So that one's good. This other little USB adapter is actually the Bluetooth connection for this air mouse. So this is a full keyboarded uh, type mouse. Right, it runs over Bluetooth and works very well, very well with the media center. And it has an air mouse function. So when the center button is pressed and you wave the mouse left and right, there's a cursor on the screen that corresponds to the actual hand movements rather than just using a D-pad or a, a traditional styled mouse. So anyway, that's what that keyboard and controller is and that's the uh, adapter for it. Obviously you'll need a HDMI cable, full size HDMI and some form of power supply for the Raspberry Pi coming down to a micro USB um, connection. This one here is actually good for about 2.1 amps. Now I do actually recommend 2 amps or better, uh, only reason being I've measured the Raspberry Pi's draw at around about half an amp. When you start to plug peripherals in there, um, you can actually get it up to 1.5 amps, especially if you want to run an external hard drive or anything like that. Uh, and you actually can even run an external USB powered um, CD-ROM or DVD drive and all of that requires a bit of extra power and you don't want to be trying to run uh, one or one and a half amp straw with a one or one and a half amp power supply. They're never quite as good as they suggest. There's always a little bit of a, uh, a tolerance. So a two amp should accommodate anything that I want to do with this Raspberry Pi. All right, so they're the building blocks that you actually need to put the Raspberry Pi together. Uh, and the rest of it is simply the configuration of the software. Um, you can go for keyboards like this, they work quite well with the Media Center and the Raspberry Pi as well, but in this instance I've already got this one and I like the air mouse function so I'm going to be using that one instead. Alright, let's take a look at the actual setup. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to do is get the image file from OpenELEC TV uh, and uh, put that on an SD card which will go into the Raspberry Pi 2 and get things up and running. So the easiest thing I've actually found to do is um, head to just your search page, type in OpenELEC Raspberry 2 or Raspberry Pi uh, and just search for that. The very first hit that you'll get is the download page for the um, image file for the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi 2. So this is the page that you get. Scroll down to Raspberry Pi builds and you'll see 
two main sections. The first section is called Arm 11 builds, that's for the Raspberry Pi 1. Um, 7 builds for the Raspberry Pi 2. You do have to download the uh, Raspberry Pi 2 one, the version for the Raspberry Pi 1 won't work. So there's two files underneath the uh, Raspberry Pi 2 section. The bottom one, OpenELEC 508 ARM disk image. That's the file you want. Okay, so click on that, save file. It's about 100 meg, just under. So save the file to somewhere where you can find it on your desktop. Okay, so once you've downloaded the file, um, just head to where you've saved it and you'll see that it's OpenELEC uh, Raspberry Pi 2.arm 5067 or 8, depending on which one you downloaded, image.gz. So this is zipped. Uh, I use 7-zip and I want to extract that to a folder of the same name. So click OK. And there we go, we've got a folder. And inside that folder is almost the same file name, just .image, not .image.gz. That's the image that we're going to put on an SD card to go onto the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so I'm using a program called Win32 Disk Imager. This is if you're using a Windows um, operating system. Uh, this is the imager program that writes raw files or image files to an SD card so they work properly. You can't just do file drag and drop, you have to use an actual proper imaging program. Um, find the device of your SD card, uh, mine's drive letter F, and then browse to the file you just unzipped. In this case, this one here, .img, and it's 299, round 300 meg unzipped. Click OK. Now that will say I'm going to write the image file to device F, which is my SD card. Click Write. And yes, I want to continue. Okay, the write was successful. And just exit out of that program. So when you've powered up, you'll see the splash screen for OpenELEC. It goes through two boot sequences. The um, first part is resizing the SD card. And then the second boot, you'll be brought through to the Kodi screen. So Kodi version 14.2. Uh, that takes a few more seconds. And then you are basically into the first part of um, OpenELEC. You're then presented with the OpenELEC um, startup. So this is the just asking you a few questions to get your configuration up and running. Uh, just select your language and uh, click next. You'll then be asked for uh, a device name, so a host name. Uh, this is important because you'll see this host name appear on your network. Uh, I've just chosen OpenELEC and then you go through to the sharing and remote access section leave Samba turned on the little blue button denotes that it's turned on um, you can use that to quickly and easily surf to the device just like it was a thumb drive uh, and then when you've uh, finished with that screen click on next that actually finishes the uh, configuration and you're in to using OpenELEC So at this stage, you can actually just use your mouse or your D-pad and browse around uh, the menu choices in OpenELEC. Um, but at this stage, unless you've plugged in a USB drive with some um, photos or m music or movies on them, you won't see anything. So head over to System, and then in the Systems menu, there is an OpenELEC option. Uh, second from the left, you want to click on that. Alright, there's a few choices from inside of the OpenELEC settings. Uh, network is where we want to go, and you want to make sure that the wireless networks option is ticked. Uh, although the word is active, um, it's not actually active unless there's a blue dot in the uh, little dot and the little button on the right hand side. So activate that. Then uh, once that's active, uh, you can head down to the next menu on the left, which is connections. And inside the connections, once your Wi-Fi or your um, networking is enabled, you'll see all of the available networking options. This is specific to Wi-Fi. 
select the Wi-Fi network that you wish to connect to and then click connect. Enter your uh, Wi-Fi password and then click done. Once you've finished there head over to the systems info options and you'll see your IP address in there. Just take note of what your IP address currently is. So head over to system and click on settings again and just familiarize yourself with a lot of the settings that are available through this particular uh, open elect distribution. Uh, there's actually quite a lot that you can do. But one of the things that you do want to do is head down to the bottom of any of the menus and you'll see a settings level. This is typically set to uh, standard. So what you really would uh, find benefit from is to change that settings from standard to something other than um, something other such as um, expert or advanced. Expert's the last setting. Uh, I prefer that one because it gives you a few more features and functions that are available within these menus that you will find useful. Uh, so yeah, set that to uh, expert level uh, and then just jump out of the um, settings tab. Okay, so from inside of settings, um, there is a series of services. And inside of services, you'll see general, uh, ultra plug and play, web server, remote control, zero configuration, airplay, and SMB client. You want to turn some of these on because they're very, very useful. So head over to ultra plug and play, um, and you'll see share videos uh, and music library options through ultra plug and play. Uh, I would turn that on. Uh, and then you'll see other options such as allow control of Kodi uh, via Ultra Plug and Play. That's also really, really handy. Uh, so turn that on as well. Once you've done that, uh, head down to Web Server. That should be turned on by default. And that allows you to browse to a web page, web page uh, using the IP address of your device and you're presented with a picture of uh, like a media center and you can do certain remote controls just using a web browser from a laptop, computer, uh, iPad, iPhone, doesn't really matter. Um, anything that's got um, a web browser on it. So that's another nice little feature. I leave that one turned on. Then head down to the remote control option. Uh, allow programs on this system to control Kodi. Uh, that's a nice little feature and allow programs on other systems to control Kodi. That's also quite handy. Just turn those options on. Um, now the next option down on the left is zero conf, so zero configuration. This is like an intelligent uh, announcement of all services from the Raspberry Pi or from Open Elect to the rest of your network. So leave that turned on. Then AirPlay. Uh, allow Kodi to receive AirPlay. So this is from an iPhone or an iPad. Um, you can open up a media file on your iPad device and then just send it straight to your media center connected to your TV and away you go. From the videos menu click add-ons and this will take you through to all of the add-ons that are available. Uh, what you install is really personal preference but the obvious um, one that most people go for up front is YouTube. So click on get more and it will take you through to a fairly large list of all available add-ons for the media center. Uh, if you just highlight uh, what they are on the left menu, it gives you a synopsis of what they are on the right. Um, but for us, we'll go straight for YouTube down the bottom of the list, third from the bottom. Give it a click and that will start the uh, YouTube install process. Click on install and it will install YouTube you to see the progress um, against the uh, menu there, downloading 20%, 39, blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's basically finished and YouTube is enabled and installed. So when you head back to videos and add-ons, you will see YouTube in your list and you just simply click on it to activate it. Uh, it will go through a setup wizard. You'll go, yes, please execute the setup wizard. Uh, it's just handy. Um, so it will ask you a few questions. So the view by default, uh, list is popular, thumbnails, it's all personal preference, but for the moment I'll just go for list as my initial default view, big list. 
and when you get into the episodes uh, for each of the channels on YouTube etc um, there are a few more options media info seems to give you nice information about what it is you're about to watch so I usually choose media info and you can change language and region if you wish to but I don't need to and there we go so with the YouTube options uh, you just go straight down to what's popular or search or if you've got an account sign in or just browse channels I'll go for search and I might just uh, type in my own show so I'll just search for MEHS my electronics hacking show and uh, episode um, obviously I've double peed that that's just the keyboard that I'm using at the moment uh, it's a little bit clunky uh, there's some better choices and better options out there but for the moment this one will do so MEHS episode click done and that will take you through to uh, YouTube searches just what you're familiar with already on your laptop or iPad uh, and there you go you get a list uh, of what's available and as you highlight on the left it will give you a synopsis of what's available on the right and there's a standard YouTube episode of mine From the systems settings options you can change your video resolution if you're not getting a perfect display on your screen uh, the left or top or bottom is being cut off so head into systems settings um, and close to the bottom uh, from video output close to the bottom one of the options is video calibration so give that a click and it will take you through to a really easy to use uh, styled menu uh, now what you need to do is you need to get the left, uh, using your mouse, get the left bracket perfectly situated what you can see in the top left corner of your screen. Then do the exact same thing in the bottom right hand corner. Just uh, put your mouse in the bottom right hand corner, click the mouse and then drag till that bar is there. Then head to the center of the screen and it asks you to draw a square. So if this image is not perfectly square, just click in one of the top left or bottom corners and give it a drag until you actually see a perfect square and that will orient everything so that it is perfectly set up for uh, your media center on the particular TV that you've got it connected to. Okay, so with your Raspberry Pi connected to your network so you can get to it from a computer, head over to your computer and, and just browse for uh, the, the actual device. So the easy way I can do that is uh, just right click on the, um, the start button and go uh, double backslash uh, either the device name or the IP address. Um, IP address usually works pretty well. So double backslash IP or device name and that will bring up um, same as if you browse to it from your file explorer all of the folders available on your Raspberry Pi as it's connected to your network. So you want to double click on the user data folder and once the user data folder is opened up you'll see a series of XML files uh, and that's where we're going to uh, paste our own XML file in order to be able to maximize caching for YouTube videos on the Raspberry Pi 2. So what I've done here is I've actually already made the file uh, so if you just copy these exact settings uh, and uh, make your own uh, advanced settings.xml file paste it into the folder that we're currently looking at on the Raspberry Pi 2 um, this will give you the additional cached settings so it's four times the cache because the Raspberry Pi 2 has much more memory available than the Raspberry Pi 1 uh, and there are uh, cache limitations when you're watching large YouTube videos so we're, we're increasing the cache uh, to four times its original size by using this advanced settings XML file so make your file save it to anywhere on your computer using notepad just make sure the file name is advanced settings.xml um, and yep, save that to the Raspberry Pi uh, into the user data folder. Uh, and then all you really need to do at that point uh, is reboot your Raspberry Pi and the settings will take effect.
I hope you found that useful and I hope you enjoy your Raspberry Pi 2 Media Center. So thanks very much for joining me and watching the show. Subscribers are always welcome, so feel free to subscribe, that would be great. And I hope you'll join me again next week.